So in January, you posted a couple Instagram things that sort of implied that Tupac was, was alive. alive and in Malaysia. Yeah. And also, I think you said some things maybe last year as well. And uh, of course, that, you know, a lot of, I just am curious, what was that? I, I already know, trust me, because when I said it, the whole world, I mean, the whole world stopped moving. Like, everybody's like, what's going on? Like, I, I went and got 200,000 followers within two days. And I, I was like, wow, like, this is. It's just crazy. Germany is calling me. I don't even speak speak German, you know, so I don't even know what to do. Uh -huh. um, pretty much, the reason why I did it, it's a it's a purpose for it, and you actually have to tune into the show to see why. Okay. It's a real it's a real good message why I did it. It's like it makes the world reflect on each on ourselves. Like, wow, okay. Do you believe he's alive? And in Malaysia? You just have to tune into the show for my answer. Oh, come on. Jake. I'm telling you, you just have to tune into the show for my answer. Like, I don't want to ruin the, it's an important message. Tupac's my godfather. So, yeah. that's, so that's all I have to say. It's just that, it's tune in and just support us. Well, let me ask you, because you said you got all the followers and people in Germany calling you. Did you get any flack for that? Were people thinking, you know, that you were joking or being disrespectful or anything like that? Of course, you know, I meant no disrespect to that man's family. You know, that man's family is my family, mm -hmm. you know? How did you feel about the Tupac hologram at Coachella a few years ago? I thought it was dope. I thought yeah. it was a pretty, it's a step into the future. We're getting closer and closer to the future. It's 2019, I expected to see some flying cars. When the hologram happened, people, you know, lost their minds, I was there. And in general, people just really, you know, want to believe that, that man is alive. That he's alive. Do you have any thoughts on why you know, uh, 25, almost 25 years later, people, you know, why his legacy is as strong as ever. Oh, it's his lyrics. His lyrics change people, you know, it's what he stood for. And that's pretty much why Death Row Records and everybody else around that, they all had, they all played their role, you know, from the DJ Quicks, from his, in, you know, incredible sounds, Snoop Dogg's incredible sound, Dr. Dre's beats, productions, my father's ambition to be the best mogul in the industry at that time. So it was just everybody played their role and they were just the best at it. My father told me that Tupac never left the studio. Never. And I believe it because he has so many songs that you could drop an album today of him of his. Mm -hmm. And I know people are expecting new music of his too. Well, so you after to you post in. on Instagram that you need a producer in the studio I know. to come in, of course. Of course. You're I was stoking you. the flames. Of course. Hello? You have a collect call from an inmate at the Richard Donovan Correctional Facility. So there's a scene um, that's already out um, from the show where you receive a phone call from your father. It's an emotional scene. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It, that scene pretty much was like a real scene. I haven't spoke to my father in three years. They had a communication ban on us. So that we couldn't send letters. We couldn't pretty much do anything. Just, I just had to pray <laughs> and, and work well, hard. Uh, why not even like email or anything? No, nah, definitely why? email. Um, they said pretty much that they felt, the judge or whatever, they felt that they, that Suge Knight and his son, that they can't talk to each other. I, I don't know. It, it was, it didn't make any sense. So when you got that phone call, can you describe to me like what was going through your head or your heart? Like, must have been very intense for you. Um, I have all these cameras around me and my father's just the first time calling my father. I mean, my father's calling me and I don't know, I just hope that he's, you know, he's happy. Cause well, you know, he's real private. This is the first time that we actually opened up. Mm -hmm. Like this is the first time that people will see Suge Knight and see the inside of his family. What's, what was he, what is he like? What kind of father was he like? You know, what kind of, how is, how is his kids? You know, so it's just, this is different parts. You mentioned how private he is. How did that phone call that's in the show come about? Did he have to be talked into it a bit? You know, it's a big step for him to be in a reality show. Oh yeah, it it was it was all pretty much like, hey Suge Knight, uh, we have your son, we're doing this, uh, is it okay? And he's like, anything to support my son, let's do it. So that's, that's, a, that's a good dad right there. What was it like growing up with him? It was the, it was the life. You know, like 10, you could, I think of it like this, we're in 2019, 10 years ago, everybody pretty much is pretty mad at us. You know, everybody was like, oh, Suge Knight, he's, he's bad, he's bad. Mm -hmm. 10 years before that, we ran the city. You know, everybody loved my father. He, he helped a lot of people in the music industry. And so it's just, growing up, I seen a lot, I witnessed a lot of greatness. I witnessed my father give back to the community. I witnessed my father employ jobs. Mm -hmm. That's really my idol to this day. He played for the Los Angeles Rams, and we have the Los Angeles Rams today. Like, everything is just working how, how it's just working for, for the best of us. What would you say is the biggest 
misconception about him because there's a lot you know he has a reputation not always a good one what do you and i know you it's really important for you to yeah. clear that stuff up yeah that's part of my you know my like my job what i do the biggest misconception could be that he's feared mm -hmm. you know and really and in reality he's just a protector that's how i like to put it you know he, he just he's he's a real good friend he's a real genuine guy